welcome everyone back. We're going to be continuing with the Photoshop uh, part of the class, of course. This is a Photoshop course, so we're going to be doing a lot more stuff than printing. We're going to move on to the web segment now. I just went over some of the materials that we have to go over, so it's, it looks very, very uh, exciting and a lot of fun stuff you guys will be will be getting into very soon. All right, so let's go ahead and um, switch my camera over so I can show you some of those details. So this is um, week 10, uh, class um, number nine, okay? That's just how the week's offset as we go forward. Um, because of the break week, we have a little bit of a of a number mismatch. It was easier when it was like one and one, two and two. Now it's a little up and down, which is okay. Um, Ready. So I'm going to release this module. I believe it was locked up until now. So it's module 10 and 11. This will cover two classes coming up. Uh, we're we're kind of wrapping up the print segment as we did last week. We had a good review of some of the um, methods and techniques we covered earlier, and we finished it off with the vector capabilities of Photoshop, which was utilizing the pen tool. And along that, we use um, the power of clipping masks, and we saw how important that was. Um, again, watch last week's video. If you haven't already watched it, it's up and running on that YouTube channel. I'm going to go over um, just quickly to show you where we left off. Sometimes I need to refresh my memory as well because I do things a little extra sometimes. I want to make sure we... Uh, covered everything. Yeah, that's right. So we did do the clipping masks on both of these... Um, both elements one was a clipping mask one was a clipping path we saved it and exported as such in other programs like indesign where we were able to um it was able to recognize the path and administer transparency to the image very wide uh, widely powerful technique where it's used in many different softwares even video editing and um, some of the special effects and stuff they use the green screen um, in the 70s and 80s, they used the blue screen, believe it or not. It was called the blue screen um, alpha channel transparency. And then in the late 90s, early 2000s, they started using the green screen. It's got to do with colors and, and the way, I guess, the technology evolved over time. I also gave you a nice uh, tracing letter S exercise. So I hope that helped you understand the pen tool better. It was different than Illustrator because we had to use different shortcuts in conjunction with drawing the path, and that was the option key, where it was able to cut and redirect the anchor point in the right direction. So I just wanted to emphasize the pen tool because it's, um, a lot of people think Illustrator when they think of the pen tool, but it's uh, very common in Photoshop as well for many purposes, as well as InDesign has the pen tool as well. If I can go back to a few other programs like Flash, and uh, even some of the AutoCAD stuff, the engineers, even the dental industry that I dabble with sometimes, even they have like a Bezier tool. Bezier is another word of the pen tool that's being used to construct these drawing segments and illustrations in a digital environment. And, and then we had some overall review with some of the other methods. So that's last week's lesson. Um, just wanted to kind of recap where we left off. And now we're going on to module number 10 and 11, the web sources. As you know, the Internet's becoming more popular than print. In the past 20 years, especially in the past two decades, we totally migrated over everything to most resources being online right now, uh, whereas um, the graphic design skill and trends kind of transitioned over to the web. I mean, it's equally divided right now. If you look at packaging and all the other things out there, with print is not going anywhere, okay? We still have to print stuff, whether it's on boxes or labels, even large format printing. Um, the cost is quite quite a lot so or significant when it comes to uh, creating those large LED signs and stuff and of course there's a life expectancy and there's the cost of batteries and stuff whereas if you like print a large format it's a lot more cost effective and you can interchange it and stuff so 
printing is still a, an important game for us in uh, graphic designers and um you know we should still consider it so up until now we covered a lot of high resolution um, outputting graphics from photoshop and of course when you deliver that to indesign illustrator you keep the resolution 300 and above it should be good for most large formats if you're dealing with like 12 feet by 12 feet large formats like i did a banner the other day i'll show you i'm doing a lot of trade shows this week even last week as well i'll just show you a quick banner we did um just to show you how big this thing is it was gave it given to me from a client from from la in the us and um it's like 96 uh inches by 96 inches i'll show you that what that looks like just so you understand how print um the print stuff works as well it's so my shows folder here there we go pack tent all right so this was the so it's eight feet by eight feet so if you do the math with eight feet that's in inches you can do the conversion uh, i think it's 96 by 96 but this is how big this banner is and you can see the quality of this banner like when you print it it has to be done properly and this is going to go like on a background of a trade show and then it's going to be even lit up in some cases this white that you see in the background it's going to be bright light coming at you so the contrast will be quite immense when you have an image and some lighting in contrast with one another um just to show you the quality of this image and this is why it's important that you you relay your photoshop skills to doing large format you have to make sure the images are captured in large format as well that's why you use those uh, high-end cameras and lenses and stuff and you get the high um, high resolution graphics i even had a problem opening this file because it was so big photoshop was there kind of harder for me to digest it and stuff i was able to eventually get it done um i just want to point this out because it's important as we move on to the web stuff i want to make sure you we've nothing left unturned with the print the logo is always eps this is always produced in illustrator you're not gonna make logos in photoshop okay the logos are mainly done in illustrator or a vector program and then they can be superimposed or implemented into the design okay of the p this is a pdf so probably they put this together could have been in design okay or illustrator even so whatever uh, software they use they put the pdf together this is another logo over here this is that's the company brand this is the product brand so rodin is the newest resin that's being used in the 3d dentistry a field of like right now they can it's amazing how far this industry has evolved i've been in this industry for 15 years you know doing creative services and stuff they can print teeth now they can pre print dentures they can print mouth guards braces all kinds of stuff that you use for like dental care and these resins can do all that stuff so it's whereas traditional ways you have to use like porcelain and zirconia wax and other methods uh, ppmmas and different plastics to produce these uh, materials right now it's all done to 3d printing and this is where this product is really 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 taken off the shelves here so if i zoom in closer to show you the quality of these images you can see how good the photos are right so they're professionally taken and yeah the closer you zoom in the worse it should get but in this case it's not because they made sure that this image was you know high output to begin with okay now if i zoom in a lot closer you can see some little deficiencies here and there but no one's gonna go that like there's one right here for example see they stitched this image together but even that no one's gonna really tell these things but i can we can tell right because we're kind of in the business of this stuff but naturally speaking i mean you know when you do this even be careful when you do a high-end job like this this should not happen by the way now did i take the time to fix this for them no because they didn't request it they just wanted to print it and i do a brokerage on the side i do a lot of printing so i took care of that stuff here in toronto for them because the shows are in toronto and they come from all over the north american stuff so this is what high-end stuff so photoshop obviously could be used to definitely uh tweak this up uh fix it crop the images properly whether it's clipping masks 
okay so i would use like a like a like a the pen tool to cut the bottle nice and clean and then we utilize that for the rest of them to implement this design and then output the image in the high resolution in this case i would do 600 dpi not 300 i would even go more because now we're looking at feet not inches so when you're dealing with feet like we're talking eight feet by eight feet you know then you have to make sure the resolution is even higher as well and i think 600 should be sufficient so when you do stuff like this make sure if you get into the you know the high-end printing stuff you utilize photoshop don't use 72 dpi okay because right now going forward we're going to use mostly you know 72 because we're dealing with um you know the internet the internet's different okay when you deal with print you have to make sure you're using 300 dpi and you can see how how good these um, this resolution is on that stuff right okay i hope i didn't scare you enough with these teeth right i'm gonna put this away now and i have to look at this stuff a lot by the way so but it's not real okay so it's not like real teeth and some people get a little grossed out when they see other people's teeth but this is all fake stuff they put in uh more like the uh you know people who need it i guess all right, so that's high end printing, uh, high resolution, and clipping mass and clip everything you've learned so far. It can help you, uh, you know, apply that skill to all the stuff I'm showing you as well. That's why I want to, I want to show you some real, real life examples that is out there that I personally have to deal with. The skills that I'm showing you is the same stuff I'm using to create these graphics for these people too. Um, all right, so this is the web image sources folder. We're gonna start building like a website now. Now, speaking of websites, I know you're learning HTML and some other uh, similar courses here. Um, with me, you're going to learn the, the UX UI design next semester. That's going to be really fun. We're going to utilize prototypes and stuff. We might even venture back to Photoshop a bit to use some of the graphics and transfer back and forth. But either way, Photoshop is still you know, a very um, useful tool for uh, creating templates and design prototype concepts for websites. You're not gonna make a website in Photoshop, okay? Most people will use programs like even right now, you got like Wix.com, GoDaddy selling their web services. You have WordPress, you have Magento, you have Shopify. You have many, many different platforms to build a website, but they all have something in common. They all incorporate, you know, template-based designs. And if you use template-based designs, you're very limited when it comes to customizing and even more so utilizing the CMS, which is like the content management system. So you got to make sure you uh, choose the right platform to do the right job. Uh, learning HTML is a very special skill. So when you learn the stuff that you're learning right now with Felice is going to be really, really helpful when you do use these Wix and GoDaddy's and WordPress, because the only way to customize these platforms is by using HTML. Okay. So if I show you like a website right now, I'll show you one of my websites. I don't know if I've shown you my websites. I have a few actually. Lately, I've been working on my, well, I'll show you my dental business directory one. This is my main platform that I've created uh, over a decade now. So this is not done in WordPress or uh, Shopify or anything like that. This is a custom designed uh, uh, directory template that I utilized from another source and I customized it. So basically it's got the categories here. I got reviews. It's like a LinkedIn slash Facebook slash uh, something, uh, another, you know, all the social media platforms like Yelp. It's got reviews and the memberships. We have products. We have coupons, classifieds, albums, blog articles, jobs, you know, news and events and things like that. And we got some advertising, of course. So this platform I built just for that reason. And we have, of course, different languages as well, right? I'm going to switch it over to, let's say, Spanish. It'll translate it to Spanish, right? Or different ones. And you do Hindi. You do any language you like. It'll translate it instantly. So it's a good platform. I'm getting some good results for it. I've been changing it quite a bit. This is like the last version and, uh, you know, it's it's been doing OK. I have over like uh, 5000 members so far. I'm trying to grow it worldwide and I have over maybe 50 countries having said that trying to join this thing. And it's uh, it's pretty exciting, you know, doing the community based platforms. 
Another one I have is my Canadian made products platform. This is another one uh, I built for the Canadian market since the COVID pandemic hit. A lot of businesses lost their, you know, their presence and their brick and mortar stores. And this was to help boost Canadian products and services by, um, um, you know, uh, creating awareness of some products and, you know, creating the boosting the Canadian economy, basically. Same deal like the dental directory, but it's a Canadian type of products and services that I built. And, you know, some other websites I've done, I can keep showing you websites, but I'm not here to do that. Just to show you a few that I've kind of uh, the transition from the traditional HTML WordPress to more like a platform based website. And, um, you know, it's different because they still have one thing in common. You still have to create the the prototype, the actual mock-up of what the website might look like. Whether it's template or non-template, you still have to create something to go with. So what I'm a lot of the Photoshop templates that you can you can get. I'll show you another one here. A lot of people do this. Um, I log into my Monster account to show you guys um, some of the website templates that are out there. The graphic designers use them. Um, so this one has, let's say, um, website templates. Let's do this one here. And I'll pick maybe. Beauty salon, sure. A lot of them have a Photoshop template design. And the way the reason we have a Photoshop template design is so you can actually do the graphics and export them and build them into HTML. I'm going to download the source folder here to show you. This is a paid sub uh, subscription, by the way. I've been using Monster for a bit. Reason is clients like to pick templates sometimes and it's easier for them to get an idea. And then we customize it from then afterwards. Either way, I mean, templates are good. Um, they just speed up the process a bit with, uh, with everything else. I think I've downloaded this one here. I don't think I downloaded it yet. Let's see if it's not working here. I'll play some other ones I've gotten from uh, from the past there. Let's see, they might have been logged in. Yeah, I'm logged in. Oh, you know what it is? Um, yeah, I just, I just have to hit the download again. I didn't have to go through... Uh, I thought we just trying to, they try to upsell you sometimes. They want to install it for you and charge you $39, which is not a lot of money. Saves you a lot of headache, actually, with some of these templates because they're all over the place. But, um, you know, better yet, you can download this stuff here and I can show you what this looks like. Um, I think this one might have more graphics to show you. Let's try this one, actually. So most of these templates, I hope these ones have it because I'm, I'm just taking a, sh a shot here. I don't even know if it's for sure. But um, I downloaded two templates from these websites that sell web templates that customers. It's not as easy as it looks, okay, because a lot of these templates do require a lot of assembly, a lot of things. This is the HTML assets. These are the documentation and... I don't think I see any Photoshop templates. Um, because they were the PSD templates. Right, so maybe I'll, I'll show you this one here. This is a furniture post for social media. Uh, there's a lot of website ones as well. There's a truck 
truck website PSD template. I'll use this one here. Um, I was expecting because usually they give you both. They give you the Photoshop and the HTML alongside. Uh, sometimes they don't. Sometimes they do, depending on the uh, the template itself. This one should have it because it's clearly says it's a Photoshop truck website template. I want to show you about what professionals use and and create. And the graphic designers sometimes get hired just to make templates, and then from that they do other type of things. Truck templates. Web. Here we go. So you pay for this basically. You buy this uh, template and they give you the sources and they give you a Photoshop folder. And what this Photoshop folder entails is the template you're purchasing. So you're purchasing the template because your client chose it because it's hard to start from scratch sometimes you, you're talking to someone you're like what do you want i want a truck there i want different services over here i want to have you know different you know about us and all these things and it's a lot of back and forth but if you have a template to start with and you know html it's the key ingredient here you're learning html you can easily stitch together a design using a photoshop implementation of a design and exporting the assets and building your Photoshop or your HTML framework. And of course, with these days with the websites, they have to be responsive and you have to consider everything else that goes into this. But all in all, I mean, this is what it takes. You create the design first, okay? And a prototype is the way to go. And then you can even use programs like Figma or even Adobe XD to make an interactive prototype. So customers can really see how this template's gonna work before they commit to the design and make the website, right? Otherwise, what's the point of coding this in HTML if they don't like it? If they don't like the design, why would you spend time doing HTML, right? So you have to, it's a lot easier to convey the message first, like do the design, even if it's like a rough thumbnail or it's more simpler than this. Even this might take a lot of work to create as a designer, but a lot of designers find this easier than making a whole website and then the client saying, no, I don't like it, basically. So what you do is you create, and this was poorly done, by the way. I'm not happy with the way it's organized. Uh, there's a lot of, when it comes to this, you have to create a lot of groups. A lot of these groups should have a lot of these layers organized, like header, uh, nav bar, a footer, all these different things. And I can see here, they were a little sloppy with it, but nonetheless, it's still a, it's still a pretty decent template with what I'm going to show you here. Right, so this is all the layer groups that's involved with this template. So you purchase this and you're given this thing. So now you can change the logo, okay? You can change uh, the background or this, you can unlock and change stuff there. Uh, you can change a lot of these things. And then obviously this becomes your, your template that you're using, right? Um, now better yet, why would you buy this when you can make it yourself, okay? So I'm going to select this auto select a layer. I had group selected. That's why I was doing this, right? So everything that you see here is done in Photoshop, okay? And so even from the truck background image to to this header for the for the for the actual uh, carousel design on on the main page, okay? Like the hero banner, then you have the call to action button, okay? Everything is done in Photoshop this way. And I'll show you tons of templates done in Photoshop. This trend has been happening for the past, you know, 20 years. And they're still using Photoshop for design work for that reason. Okay. And you can see once you do this, you can then easily export these items into HTML. Okay. For example, let's say I select this text um, header here. I can go to the type menu here or layer, I should say. Right. And I can copy the CSS. Right. I can copy the CSS and that'll copy all the properties for that particular font. And I can apply that in my HTML directly. So let's say I copy the CSS for this terminal network folder that I that I selected. Or even even this one here. I'll copy this CSS afterwards. I'll copy three of these and create CSS styles and then put them into the HTML website. I'll have to op open up a text editor. I'll do a simple text edit here. I don't have to do, I know you guys do VS code or some other, or brackets even we used, okay? So I just pasted this um, header. So the terminal network, 
And this is the color, the font weight, the transform, line height, text line, position. All the stuff goes in that one. Okay, then I can go paste another uh, C, uh, CSS here. I'll create the subheader here, okay? The, the actual comment. So I'm gonna go to, uh, again, go back to my layer menu here, copy CSS, back to my text editor, paste, okay? Back here again, this is the uh, little a read more call to action button. We're going to copy that CSS. Paste so you can kind of see how you can utilize your design here and translate it to CSS. And then in HTML, of course, you have to build a framework, you know, the sections, the headers, the nav bar, the buttons and stuff, the hero banners, the content, the footers, right? So that's how you can basically go back and forth between Photoshop and your code. Now there's other methods you can you can even export these assets because these graphics need to be also exported like how are you going to get the struck in there right so to get the struck in there this this has to has to be exported as an image independently and fitted within a design so all this is customizable and doable but you have to know how to execute it okay so i hope i gave you a good introduction to this whole you know, web a Photoshop relationship that you can um, build yourself as a designer. And uh, let's do an exercise that will kind of strengthen your skill with this and teach you how to do it. Uh, because showing you examples is not really going to teach you. It's just going to kind of make your curiosity go a little, you know, more enhanced, which I hope that that happened because I wanted to show you first why we're doing this, how important it is. And how many different, you know, industry professionals do the Photoshop uh, stuff? And they do, okay? And I don't want you to think it's all about Wix and the WordPress and, you know, HTML even. Design is very important. This is why Photoshop does a great, great deal of that as well. Um, okay, all right. So let's close this down, this template here. I'm going to close it. I have tons of templates, by the way, I can show you that we've uh, worked on in the past. And now with this new copy CSS back and forth, you can see how you know helpful this can be you save it as a as a css file and you just copy these are your these are your um, your css tags in your html and that'll be exactly like this as you see it from the design uh, translate translated to code i'm not gonna save this by the way I'm just gonna leave it alone all right and these other templates that you saw i mean yeah the html is built so if you just open up the you know they have the html done already for you which is good, but you have to change it. You have to change the images. You have to change the content. You have to change a lot of the stuff. So um, I'll just open up one of these pages here. Right. So this is the HTML template. Although it looks nice, it's still hard to to dive in there and to do stuff, guess what? You have to know HTML to to go and edit edit this template. So the fact that you guys are learning your HTML now, you can easily go in there, open up the source code, and if a client gives you a template to work with, you can do it. All right, so you, I can open this with uh, brackets. I think I have the VS Code. We used to use brackets before for coding. And then this is your this is your html here so you can see your head the body okay and all the other a lot of div tags okay are used for this website even the more traditional stuff and there's this how you can edit the actual html into your templates so whatever you're learning is really good guys all that stuff you're going to utilize it whether it's working from scratch building a website which a lot of times you might have to do Utilizing templates also is a good way, but with that, consider Photoshop because it's going to help you a lot in terms of the design and layout. All right, I'm going to tuck these templates away now, and let's go ahead and download this stuff from our module. Um, let's go back here for a second. Uh, let's get this web image sources folder downloaded. So let's go ahead and uh, make this visible to you. You can download that right now. You also have a Photoshop wireframe file. I'm going to make that visible as well. All right, so we're going to utilize both of these sources here. And um, between this class and next class, you're going to be able to create a website 
design and Photoshop and follow the, you know, the specs that are given to you as well. So let's see what this folder entails. Uh, click on it and you're going to download it onto your computer there, desktop. And this is the wireframe file. We're going to download that one also. I might give you some additional sources. I'll wait until next week for that. We'll see how far these sources takes us. Um, just to kind of show you what's happening, we have three modules left. Uh, the, the module number 12 is going to be quite interesting. We're going to uh, generate assets for um, for the HTML stuff. And then 13 is going to be... motion design so we're going to get into some animation and stuff as well so you're going to create some nice uh, not just gifs but even videos from photoshop and 14 is usually presentation day so i don't know if we, we're going to do presentations in this class but we're going to do some q a hang out and do some fun stuff along the way maybe some review stuff but that's how we're going to wrap up the semester all right so we still have a good month and a half left let's uh have a good uh strong finish with the semester. It's going to put these away. So these are the uh, the files you can download from from um, from the Blackboard. Um, if you open up the image sources, Okay, it's going to give you like a folder. This folder is just going to help us with some images that we can utilize to create a template so we don't have to, you know, scour the internet and get stuff and waste like time doing that uh, as we've done in the past, right? Because I would ask the students spontaneously, hey, what do you guys want to do? And they'll say, let's make a website. What kind of website do you guys make? And let's do a cafe website or whatever. So then we will go look for, you know, ca cafes and images and you know, coffee beans and whatever the theme is. Then we'll have to save the images and then optimize them. And that'll take up like a good half an hour or 45 minutes of the class. Whereas I figured, you know what, let me just provide the images to my students and they can just use the sources and we'll just create a generic website. And these images are all, all from Unsplash or, um, you know, some other sources. They're pretty high quality images as well, which is good for websites, right? A lot of them have sneakers and shoes, uh, so it's like a product based. Some have like backgrounds and landscapes, and there's people in there and there's some other stuff, right? So you can utilize this as like a, and there's one with a texture, okay? So see how textures can work as well. So we can utilize these sources for this exercise, okay? And this is already like a pre made a call to action banner for. Uh, for the product for the for the Converse shoes there, right? So this is what I'm at giving you to work with, so we don't have to uh, you know get images online. And based on this, you can create your own website, your own images, as you will for this final project. So I'm going to introduce you to the final project as well. And I'm also going to give you some time to work on this during the class too. So sometimes you know as we wind down with the later classes, I'll give you some time to work on this. If you have any questions and stuff, you can always ask as well. So that's what the image sources is. All right, uh, this other Photoshop file is um, a template of what it's gonna look like. Uh, I don't wanna give you this yet, but this is how we're gonna create like a website design in Photoshop. Just, not in the same detail as the one with the truck, let's say, right? Because that one has a lot more content and materials. Of course, we can do that if we had more time, but I'm going to show you the fundamental principles of building a template like that and what it entails and how to do it properly and that kind of stuff. So this is what we're going to build today. Maybe maybe a little different in, uh, in a way that it'll look and stuff, but this is the end result, and this is the columns we're going to create. We're going to create a little nav bar and the header and put some images in there, okay? So this is how we're going to build this website. And next week, we might even uh, finish that off. Like I said, it's a two-part class. Today, we have to build the fundamental uh, foundation, okay? So once we do the foundation next and, and the design and the images, next week, we're going to do the exporting and we're going to do the um, the implementation for, for the prototype. I'll have to show you some other tricks and methods that Photoshop has as well, okay? So that's what's uh, in store for us.
So to start with, I like to go to Photoshop, okay? Just like straight from scratch. Now that you saw templates and samples and ideas and other examples I've shown you, let's go right into, let me make sure I'm not missing anything here. Okay, let's go right into Photoshop and build the template, okay? So here we are. I'm gonna click on a new file. I wonder if they have the, just, just, just out of curiosity here, I wanted to see if they have the, um, Oh, because I moved it, I think I can't open it. Anyways, doesn't matter. I'm going to create a new file, right? And you can see how these um, different options for, as we know already, how different categories Photoshop will cater to, uh, from photo, prints, art and illustration, web. We've utilized a lot of the print settings in the past for the book cover, for the poster, for other projects, for the magazine ads, print, print, print. So now we're transitioning over to web. And this is where the settings are a bit different because we're dealing with the, with the screen resolution. And that's always a 72 dots per inch. And with different video cards and monitors and devices and screens, that can vary. There's no real one set size, whereas print, with print as well, you have, there's not one set size. You can do a letter size, you can do tabloid, you can do business cards, brochures, letterheads, different print sizes. Same for web, there's different web sizes. This is the most common one people like to use. This is the large format, 19, 20, 1080p, more like your television screen. Although it's 4K TV, this is more like a 2K or high definition screen. Then you have the we um, the medium size, which I personally like because it's fourteen forty by nine hundred. It's a good starting point. This is minimum, so it's thousand twenty four seven sixty eight. The very first high definition resolution that came out. Uh, if you go back to the earlier versions in the you know mid two thousands, this was the resolution then. As we got into two thousand ten and further, we transitioned to this size. And now with 2020 and onwards, we have the 1920, we got the 4Ks, the 8Ks, all the Ks means thousands of pixels. 4K means 4,000 pixels. It's not only 4,000, but it's close to 4,000. 3,967, whatever the number is, but it's close to 4K. That's just a quick, you know, a definition to define the resolution that way. And it's a catchy marketing tool as well. Okay, you also have the mobile setting as well. You can see the different mobile applications there. And you have the, because you're going to create a mobile prototype. That's next semester. We're going to do some stuff together with that. We're going to create a, a mobile app prototype for different phones. You have the iPhone X, you have the earlier generations of iPhones, and you have other presets as well like the iPads and the watches and from Samsung to Apple, you have all the different products or Android, I should say. And so Android or Apple. And of course you have film and video. So these are the main three that we're gonna be looking at, uh, well, web for now, and then next semester we'll do the mobile stuff as well. But we're gonna use programs like XD and Figma to do the prototyping. We're gonna Photoshop, will just set up the graphics for us. All right, another thing <clears throat> I'd like to point out is this feature here. It's called Artboards. Artboards lets you create multiple pages. Like you probably <clears throat> are familiar with Illustrator. Illustrator has the Artboard tool to create multiple artboards. As you know already, Photoshop can do the same thing. And for the, in this case, it'll be good to use, um, especially if you're doing multiple artboards or multiple pages, okay? But because you're starting off from scratch right now, it's good to just turn it off because we don't want to use artboards until later when we create additional pages. Because uh, if you just activate it now, it's going to cause a little problem with the way your layers organization works. If you're not familiar with it, it just throws students off sometimes that I found from experience. So I like to just keep it off for now, but good to know the feature is there for you to create multiple artboards just to quickly show you what that does because i'm talking about it is you're going to do this and this is your artboard or your first web page 
Now, keep in mind, Photoshop automatically changed to the artboard tool instead of the move tool. I never showed you this yet because we had no reason to we use artboards up until now because you're going to create multiple pages or multiple websites, let's say, multiple page for a website. Here you can control the width and the height. Even though it's predefined, you can always add more height to your website. As you know, it's like a bottomless pit sometimes. So you can scroll all the way down for whatever website it may be. You can also increase the width as well. Although it's not advisable that you do this, um, the width should stay fixed, okay? But sometimes you might want to fix it to a certain width. Now, I don't know why it says inches in here. It could be my preferences. So you should set up the preferences to also work in pixels because inches is irrelevant in this case scenario. For printing, inches is good because then you're more, you know, related to the overall finish and size. When it comes to web, video, uh, social media, uh, presentations on screen, pixels is the way to go. So I'm going to go back to the preferences here. Settings. Um, And what I can do from general as well. I'll show you the more um, units and rulers, right? I'll show you the, the technical way to do this, and then I'll show you the um, quicker way to do it. So the rulers, for example, here, you can change it to pixels because that's what we want. The type is always measured in points, okay? And um, I think that's the main takeaway here. You can also look at the other preferences like guides and grids. You can change their colors and, and plugins and things. I don't mess around with this too much because every time they update the new software, they're resets anyway. So I go with the, what the developer recommends. I go with the developer settings. I change a few things, but very rarely if I need to for whatever good reason. In this case, we're changing the, the units and rulers because we're dealing with websites. So we want to change it to pixels, not inches, of course. And then ultimately, this also changes to pixels and not inches, as you saw earlier. That was uh, like, you know, um, eight inches or 18 or something like that. Uh, another way to do this, okay, a quicker way is to open up the rulers. If you press Command or Control R and the rulers show up, okay, this is a universal shortcut Photoshop, Illustrator, InDesign. You press Command or Control R. You can then right click on the top ruler tab and change it that way. So if I go to millimeters, everything changes to millimeters, including my settings, which is kind of cool. It's a lot faster than going through the settings, but I also wanted to show you the settings so you can control other settings as well. It's good to know both, right? Let's go back to inches. So 18.68 inches is equivalent to 1345 pixels. It's like your little converter calculator stuff. All right, uh, so that's how you can easily change your rulers, guides, and, and uh, measurements and stuff to equate in pixels. Another important thing when you do these websites is getting your guides and, and grid set up. So if you press Command or Control apostrophe, well, there's my grid, and the Command semicolon is my guides, which I don't have them yet. I'll see them later. Uh, to You can go to View, right? Uh, show grid. This is the shortcut I'm using, command apostrophe. It's just quicker to do that than going to the menu all the time. And this grid could be also very useful, especially if you're doing design with it, because you can go to uh, preferences. And go to uh, guides and grid preferences, which is just underneath the units and rulers I went over earlier. Here you can specify um, how many uh, grid lines you can have per square inch or per unit. So in this case, every 100 pixels, I'm going to get one of these blocks to show up, which is kind of cool, right? 100 is an even number to note. Now, you can also do what's called a subdivision of four, and that's like a fraction. So if you do... Um, uh, four subdivisions of 100 is 25. It's like four quarters in a dollar or 25 cents in a, in, you know, times four is one dollar. So that's the subdivision of 25. So 100 uh, 
a hundred per square inch. I don't, maybe if math math is not your forte there. I'm just gonna do you a quick rundown. So this is a hundred pixels, a hundred here, a hundred there. A subdivision of four will be 25, 25, 25, 25, like four quarters, right? It's like basic fractions. That's how this works. Um, some people go as low as 10, 50, easy numbers to divide. You don't want to put 25 because then 25 divided by four, it's a little harder math to do, whereas 20, 30, 40 is a lot easier. So we'll keep it at 100 for now. I'll make it a little brighter because this light blue is getting a little lost. Okay, so I'll make it a little darker here. And then we'll do the um, looking at some of the other stuff here too. The guides, I'm going to make the guides maybe this color here so they all stand out. And the other ones are, I think that's the other one there. That's the path, controls, all, all the other stuff is there as well. All right, let's call let's click OK. Let's zoom in here more. This is exactly what happened. All right, so there's my grid that I made. Now, do we have to use the grid? For websites, honestly, you don't have to use the grid. Uh, does it help some people? Yes, but personally, I'll use the guides instead of the grid. So I'm going to show you the guides next, okay? So the grid, you can just hit command, apostrophe, you can hide it and show it that way, right? But for the, for the guides, what you have to do is to create a responsive website design. You can't just kind of design any way you like. It has to be divisible into an even number within the columns. So some people do eight, some do 10, some do, you know, nine, but a lot of them choose an even number because you got to pick like a common denominator. So a common denominator would be good like 12. 12 is the best one and it's the most popular one because if you have like 12 columns going this way, you can easily divide 12 into three, into four, into six. Okay, so a lot of numbers can go into 12. Right, and you can multiply that to get the number. And instead of doing it the old way, because we used to actually literally do this, right? There's one, there's the other column here, then you create a little, little of a gap, then you create another column. So you have to measure this. You don't just do it the way I'm doing it right now. You have to literally use the rulers, the guides, you have to use different measuring units. This would take a long time to make. But the good thing is once you make it once, you don't have to do it ever again because you save it as a blank template for yourself. And every time you do another website, you can just utilize that template over and over again and just change the graphics and stuff. All right. So because you haven't done this before, I'm going to show you how to make a template like this. However, we're not going to take two hours doing it. I'm going to take a lot quicker because there's a better way to do it now than there was like i don't know like five six years ago right so i'm gonna go ahead and just um erase these guides right now so we're gonna go to um view guides and we're gonna clear the guides okay i'm also want to resize this this artboard here right because i want to show you how the flexibility is important with the design so let's go to another website online and gauge an idea of how these websites are measured. I showed you some of my platforms. What's the most popular website these days that everyone uses? I think Amazon will take the, the reins because they're, I mean, they're the most profitable website online and they make, you know, trillions of dollars, right, with what they're worth. So this is their website, right? So let's see how Amazon is built because Amazon itself uh, has a fixed width and height as well. If I go wider, let me go wider. Like I'm just doing this on purpose right now, right? You see how the website stops right there, this this red bounding box, this image, because there's nothing there but this gray area, which means this is nothing but a gray background, right? This is what happens. So Amazon even has a fixed width as well. So as busy as the website is or as simple as the website is, you have to have some kind of a fixed width or then you can do percentage and that'll scale according to the browser. Like this header is, like these buttons and stuff, no matter what I do, they're always going to stick and expand based on the boundary of the browser window. Whereas the graphics don't. 
because this image is not going to stretch. Look, that's a slice. This is a slice. This is a link. This is a link too. That's a link. These are all little slices, which you're going to learn how to do in Photoshop, how to cut these images and put them in there. So this is all assembled in that type of uh, scheme or schematic. So I want you to learn and understand how this works for us before we apply it to practice. So this has a fixed width, okay? And yeah, it goes down and forever. And you can see, look, even this is a slice. These are all graphics that you have to create and upload on the website, right? So all these images, a lot of them are slices. You see, look, you can see it because I'm clicking on the image. Look, you can like right click. Let's get this PlayStation here, right click. Uh, copy the image, okay? I can go to Photoshop right now and just hit paste, right? So you can bring the image that way. Is it transparent? No, it's got the white background, I think, right? And I do have the artboard selected, right? So it an image is an image, right? You can, you know, when you produce it online, you publish it on the website, right? Then this basically goes right, right on it. But you can see how you can just pull it off like that. Copy, paste, you can right click, you know, save the image to the desktop or whatever. So these are all image sources that are on the website. Now, uh, let me just do this as well. So you can see the entirety. I'm gonna max it this way. Okay, you can still see the gray edges, right? My monitor is not the greatest. I've had, I have an 18 inch monitor. I apologize, I think it's, yeah, 16. Yeah, 16 is the biggest they make of the MacBook Pros. So they have this gray here still. You see the gray is there. So this website width basically is from here to there. So if we prepare this layout graphics and essentials that to build an Amazon website, we should follow suit and measure its entirety. So let's go to Command Shift 4, which is a screen capture method used by the Mac and the PC, I think you Windows Shift S or something. And then you have the, the crosshairs here. You can see my mouse cursor here on the top of the search bar. Notice how there's coordinates, like there's 565 by 108. So what that means is uh, 108 is the pixels of the Y, um, of the Y axis and the X axis, because it's all about X and Y. This is a two dimensional framework, right? Two dimensional means there's X and Y. Uh, width and height, horizontal and vertical, right? When you add the third dimension, it's the Z axis. That's when you extrude elements. You do the 3D rendering, 3D design, you give it depth, so it becomes three-dimensional. So we're not concerned about 3D because most of our designs that we're making right now, it's 2D, right? Like websites, apps, prints, everything is X and Y coordinates. So this is how you measure the positioning of where this is. And back in the day when we did image mapping, thanks to these coordinates, we're able to pinpoint images and give them hyperlinks to go to different websites. So the why I'm doing this is because I want to measure Amazon's width. So I'm going to go directly from here, like where the edge is, all the way, I'm going to screen capture it to here, where it stops, right? I got 1500 pixels exactly. So Amazon, upon my assumption, or you know, uh, my investigation here or or research, uh, it's 1500 pixels based on my analysis. There's the right word. Okay, so 1500 pixels is what the Amazon website width is. So if I was to, uh, you know, make this now 1500 pixels is the right width to accommodate a design like Amazon. So I would type 1500 pixels here and build an Amazon website from this point forward or just prototype that looks like Amazon that will eventually become maybe a website like that or like an e-commerce platform. But if I want to match current website kind of prototypes, and a lot of them are 1500 pixels. I'm, I'm not just picking on Amazon here, right? A lot of them do have a 1500 pixel. Some have a 1400. Some have 1450, some have, you know, 1600, depending on, on the website. But that's the sweet spot right there, 1500 pixels. Okay, so I want you to remember that because that's always been like the big question, like how wide is the website? So you can kind of see yourself and measure it and see what's going on with the um, existing platforms and websites. So that means is if I go to file place, the image I just captured from you know, my website there, it fits perfectly within the 1500 pixels radius. 
if we build a website design, we're going with 1500 pixels. So back to the artboard tool, and you can see here 1500. The height is irrelevant because you can always make the height more as you build the website. Like what's Amazon's height? We don't know, keep going and going and going, right? Till whatever. And if you want to look at their code, view page source, you can see how the code is, right? And you guys are learning HTML and the head tag and all that stuff, right? So if you go all the way down, this is how the website of Amazon's the back end, right? You can see how they did it. They use a lot of um, various tags, of course, JavaScripts, uh, div tags, okay? Same template that I'm showing you with that truck website, the way it was made or whatever these templates are. Div tags is still kind of the more popular framework with, of course, um, uh, responsive design. Is Amazon responsive? Not on the browser, believe it or not. So if I do this, it's it's kind of responsive, kind of not, because look at the menu, it gets cut off basically. It doesn't become a nav bar menu from here. So why is that? Well, because they um, they have an app, okay? And I think when this detects your phone, it does kind of look better. I did do my research for this, but on the website, it doesn't really respond like, let's say, I don't know, my website. Let's go to my Canadian made products website here. So if you see what happens to my website, when you make it, you know, medium size, see, this is the iPad version. The menu ends up here. The website version, the menu is there. The menu disappears. It becomes a tablet. If you keep going smaller, it becomes a mobile device. Then you click here. There's your mobile device right there. So that's how you make a responsive website. And everything kind of tranquates down to, you know, one column. Okay. Um, you know, if you go tablet, you might get two columns. Okay. And if you go desktop, you're going to get four columns. So you specify that in your HTML. Okay, three or four columns. Amazon doesn't do that. It does It does with, well, yeah, it just even cuts this off, believe it or not. Right? So it does have a maximum of like two, three, four. So the reason is, again, the detection and also the, um, the mobile app that they have that they're using. So it's a little different framework than what I'm showing you. <laughs> Anyways, um, back to my source code here. I don't know if you knew this. If you go all the way down, Amazon has like 2,000 lines of code, 2,370. And if you look at the very, very bottom of Amazon's developers, look, they're having some fun at the end. They, they put a little tag for themselves. They put a duck that does meow, a duck that meows, okay? So they put a little, this is a common tag to have some sanity in the way they're coding this stuff like this is uh, this is not my territory i've done html i've done websites but when it comes to like this advanced stuff i obviously hire i'll hire a programmer before i try to do it myself but that's how advanced their scripts are so they do some fun with this and they they put some funny stuff like that at the very bottom no one in their right mind will do this by the way so I just ended up on my fluke sometimes. I was looking at the extent of their code and I found that. So I thought I'd share that with you. It's still there. So that's something a lot of people don't know. All right. So let's go to um, back to our Photoshop. Now that we did some more kind of, uh, you know, analysis of other websites and how they work and widths and heights. Let's follow that suit and use this, uh, maybe we'll use Amazon's example framework for building our, our um, columns. Because like I said, and look at their columns, four columns, right? Four columns, because uh, four goes into 12. So that's the common denominator. So to build a framework like this one, I'm just gonna hide the layer for a second. I'm just gonna get rid of it actually, we don't need it now that we know what's going on. So we'll do a 1500 pixel with the height for now, I like to keep an even number. I'm going to go with 1200, okay, just to keep it like that. And then I can always build the height afterwards, okay? And let's and the artboard, I know we have an artboard here set up, so I guess we'll leave it alone for now. Before I said don't use an artboard, if you don't, you can just resize the document instead of the artboard. So just, you know, leave it for now, that's fine. Um so when I went to file new, sorry not to backpedal here, but just to kind of be on the right track, you can pick any one of these and just cus or customize them from here. So if I was to do this again after my explanation, 
I would just go right to 1500 pixels. The height, I'll make it 1200 pixels, right? The artboard, I can turn it off or on, doesn't matter. If I go off, it'll just look like that. It's a little easier to work with. And then you can just do your design that way. If the artboard is on, then you have like an artboard, which you can create. Watch this. If you click the plus button, you can create a duplicate of the artboard. Now you have three artboards. So if you're doing multiple artboards, that's great. If you're not, it's not really necessary because then you have artboards within the layers of the artboards and stuff like that, right? So tell you what, I'll just keep this really, really simple, okay? And then I'm going to um, don't save it. I'm going to go with this one here. So let's just, if you want to copy me with this exercise to keep it simple, go to new again, go to web, turn off artboards, okay? Now that we know how they work, we can always make them, we can always convert artboards after the design too. We can add artboards. So it's, don't think it's a definite, you know, selection option. You can always modify it. 1500. 1200, 72 DPI, RGB color mode, white background. <clears throat> Rulers are visible. Right click on the ruler, make sure it's in pixels. And to start a framework for any website, I'm going to implement, it's about time they did this, the 12 column um guide setup okay so this is what most templates possess and most designers utilize when they make prototypes websites in photoshop so you go under um they always move the menu sometimes there we go it's under view okay so the view menu go down to guides Okay, and you're gonna go over over to go all the way over to a new guide layout. I even tell students to screen capture this, like Command Shift Three. So you take a picture of this because you might forget where it's located, and it's a very kind of hidden little area. It's not like right in your face. You gotta look for it, as I had to. And sometimes I forget where it is. I gotta, you know, regurgitate my memory there. So it's new guide layout, and this is where you can create this mathematically divided even column based system okay there's even a preset right the preset is you can do eight columns you can do 12 columns which we're going to go with 16 columns right you can do lots of different columns if you do like a mobile device you can do four columns right you can do different columns for different layouts so we're going to stick with 12 because 12 is a good common denominator okay you can even customize it here. You can change it to 13 if you want, right? It doesn't have to be from the default. Then it becomes custom. So let's stick with 12, okay? I'll just like to keep it simple like that. The color of the guides, I mean, you can stick with gray. It's a nice neutral color, so it doesn't take away from your other colors and graphics. Um, the width. The width is how wide you want the whole thing to be. So if I go, let's say, you know, I don't know, 600 pixels, they're going to go six or 60 pixels, like how wide you want the columns to be, right? Um, I'm going to leave that field blank for now, okay? Um, be just because uh, of the way they're going to automatically resize themselves, so I will leave the field blank. The gutter is the space between the columns. So 20 pixel is what the space is right now. Let's go with uh, 15. So it's a little smaller. Even 10 might work as well. Let's go with 10. I like 15 better, right? You can also add rows. And you can do like, let's say, I don't know, five rows. And you can also control that one as well. The height, the gutter. We don't have to utilize rows in websites because it's a bottomless pit. I mean, you can in some, you know, in some types of designs for the headers and stuff, but you can manually make those guides appear, which I'm going to get into later. So leave the rows alone. Do the columns. Okay, you can also do a margin. A margin is, you know, basically the page margins. The websites have it as well. The top is 20 pixels. That's fine. Um, the left and the right could be um, 20 pixels as well. 
the bottom could be perhaps maybe 50 pixels. It's a little more. It's like the footer. Okay. So that's a preference you can make. But honestly, the bottom, we haven't established it yet. So you can always change that afterwards. What's important here of all this is to center the columns. If you center them, then everything will be centered. You might probably didn't see anything, but if you were to change the width to, let's say, 100 or 80. Let's say 80 pixels was our, was our width of our columns. You can see how they're centered now because of this option here. That's what centered means. But if you leave it alone, it means it's going to divide them equally across the page by default. So I would just leave it blank. Keep it centered anyways. Clear existing guides means if you have previous ones that are there, they'll just delete them. So that's a good option to check on. And I think this is a good way to set it up. Maybe the top one, I can move it down to 100 pixels. This will be like my, my navigation nav bar stuff, right? So once you set up your, your template with website design, uh, using this new guide layout feature, you're ready to start your site. Another, if when I was teaching this class in the classroom, I would ask the students to screen capture this as well. So I would do a command shift three and take a picture of this. If you want to do that while you're watching this video or while you're doing watching me live right now, you can do that as well. Screen capture this because you might want to remember these settings for later. All right. And the preview basically shows you what the preview looks like. If I click OK, this is how I can start my website. Now, it's easy. Um, it's very important to get the fundamental building blocks in there, like your your image placements, your text placements, your headers, uh, everything that goes in there uh, should be placed at this point before you get into images and, and all the other fancy stuff. So it's all about creating your, your wireframe. So the wireframe design, and this is something we'll venture into next semester with the mobile devices, is very important to create a wireframe for a website before you even start thinking about all the other stuff. So let me show you some wireframes online wireframe website here we go so you can see how wireframes look like they're basically very simple um you know some of them are sketched i always encourage my students to sketch their ideas on paper uh, you sketch the idea and then from that you show your clients or you show you know your boss or whoever you're working with and once they approve the design, then they build the website. This is called a wireframe. That's the true form of a, it's like a house, right? You know, you're building a house, you're build, putting the foundation, the cement, you pour the cement, you build the beams, the frames, you know, it's just a house. There's no furniture, there's no windows, there's no doors, there's none of that stuff, no fixtures, that comes later, right? So same kind of analogy will relate to you building a website. It's like building a house or building anything, right? You start from somewhere, drawing a concept, an idea. That's how you start. And then you obviously venture into some other, you know, examples like this one here. See? So we can build a website like this, right? And basically make this into a real website once we're done, right? Or I can even take an existing website and show you how that's converted into wireframes. Like the Amazon website, we can make that into like a wire, okay, wire wireframe. Like let's see, Amazon if they have it. They might have an example, but we can make one either way, right? So you can see how Amazon was framed and designed. I know they have some, I you know, like CNN. So there's a, a popular news uh, platform, uh, CNN. So that basically you can see how that, why other websites too, okay? Before the website came into existence, this was the wireframe they built it from, okay? Uh, what's this? Yahoo, um, the New York Times, okay? It's because it's, it's a pretty huge website. There's a lot of different, uh, 
you know, information here, like links, images, videos, content. So before they did that, they had to had a, have a plan on how to how to insert all these elements and how to make it work. So this is how they build these wireframes. And you can see how wireframes are, are very important to building the website, OK? So we're going to venture into the wireframe process here. And then from the wireframe process, we're going to integrate the images and the colors and everything as well. So um, it's good to go by examples than just starting from scratch. So if I'm going to do an example, like maybe we'll pick on Amazon for now, we can make a wireframe that looks similar to the Amazon concept. I know this is just a screen capture, so I'm going to have to show you the website its entirety to show you. Right, so this is your nav bar, and this is your um, the the hero banner, right? The carousel hero banner, the image. It's got the arrows to scroll back and forth, right? So different things happen, and even these are um, wireframe. So let's go ahead and wireframe this. I'm gonna do first the top nav bar wireframe. So we're gonna go ahead, and we're not gonna measure it exactly. I think this is about about the same way. So we're going to go ahead and just go back and forth and kind of see how they did it and build a wireframe from there and then build their own website, basically. Uh, make it look like similar to Amazon's websites. A lot of people like to copy other sources. If it works, you know, why not replicate it, right? That's what most people do. You can't reinvent the wheel, right? But you can make it different because you're a designer, so you can change things like colors, images, content, everything else. But a lot of these websites look the same. That's what I'm trying to say. They all have the menu going across like this. They all have some images here. The only difference is columns and you know layouts and stuff like that, and functionality, of course, with uh, with uh, you know purpose of the website, which is a big part. But the layout, I mean, I don't see that much more different than back in the let's say '90s and 2000s when we used Flash. Websites were very different. Like the interaction was different. The menus were different. Sometimes the menus were here on the left side, like vertically like a frames website and that would change this window here. It was it was pretty different, right? Then they made it all, you know, semantic and more I guess compliant with HTML5, so it's easier on devices and other things. And there's a reason why they did what they did, right? But for for time for a period of time that was just going all over the place. It was really hard to control the internet because there were so many ways of building a website. Flash, HTML, Right? There's so many different builders and stuff. Now it's more like HTML5. You don't see too many Flash websites, right? Because Flash, they kill it off with the plugin. I think Apple did it with their devices. And then Android follows suit, right? So let's go ahead and build the navbar first. I'm going to go use the, um, the, the rectangle tool. This is a good way to put image placements for now because we're not going to put images. We're just going to put design blocks. Right, so we're gonna put these design blocks all across. This is gonna go all the way from here to there as the nav bar has it like that. Right, now the good thing about these vector tools in, in uh, Photoshop, as we started with this last week with the pen tool and we did some other vector drawings with the book cover, we utilize some of these design elements. So now we're using it for the website. See, they're very useful. So if you click on the fill here, I can pick a different fill color for the background drop of the uh, website. Now we're going to stick with grayscale because that's the best way to create a wireframe. Notice how the ones I showed you were all grayscale because this way it doesn't distract us from the content. Then you can see where images go, content placements, uh, links, headers. The colors can come afterwards and then images, right? So first grayscale. OK, so it keeps it nice and consistent. And then we get into the other um, elements as well. So I'm going to go with this darker gray color banner. If I may put another thing here for the other links. Sometimes it gets in the way. You just have to use the menu here to just to deselect it, click away, right? And just you can create another rectangular a menu design image going across here like this. 
and this could be the um, the fill could be a darker gray or a black. And you can then control the width, so it's fifteen hundred pixels. Uh, the um, the height I want at forty pixels, so it's exactly as it'll match my CSS or HTML. The X position is slightly off; it's a minus two. I'm gonna put it as zero, right? And the Y should be one fifty because I know the height for this rectangle is one fifty as well. So if I click on that rectangle, look, it's off by a pixel. I'll make it fifteen hundred. Um, the height will be one fifty. The X position will be zero because it starts right from the zero and the Y position will be zero as well because it's right at the top left corner. And if you see here at the top left corner, it's zero zero, right? That's what the top left corner is. And if your zero got messed up, that means you touched this corner here. You can reset your zero zero to be here. Now the zero zero becomes measured from this point. Again, watch this from the top left corner. You can reposition the zero zero to be anywhere on your page. So that means you recount or you reset your count from here going this way. So the position now for this is th minus 391 because I, I reset my zero to be here, right? So be careful when you do that. You don't want to do this, by the way. So don't do this. Why am I showing you? Because some students have done it as, as an accidental move by mistake. So I don't know why, because they, they're trying to grab, grab the guide and they grabbed it from here instead of from here, basically. That's what they did, right? So if you were to do that, okay, what you want to do is just to reset this back to normal, double click right here, double click, and it resets the zero here, the zero there, and then you're good, okay? So if you've done that by accident, no worries double click and reset your zero zero origin all right and keep an eye on the, your transform properties in this case we get technical with measurements and stuff simple things we got to make sure we're on point so if this is uh you know 1500 across x and y is the beginning here the height is 150 the guide is at 150 because uh, we set it up to be that way. And the second nav bar, I'll make the height actually 50 pixels. The width is the same. And the X would be zero. The Y would be 150. Right? So now it's perfectly set up to be that way. All right. Uh, let's see some of the other elements that we want to create here and i'm not copying amazon exactly i'm just kind of using it as an example to show you how you could look at something and recreate it by going back and forth i'm pressing command tab repeatedly and i'm looking at this um you know this hero banner that goes across like a carousel hero banner so i'm going to go ahead and utilize that one i don't care the exact height they're using i'm going to go with works for me right so i'm going to make mine roughly i don't know maybe a couple of hundred pixels from the top down. So this would be the banner that goes across all the way here. Let's go ahead and use another rectangle. This time for the fill, I'll use a lighter gray so it'll kind of stand out. And I'm going to go ahead and make another one all the way across like this as my hero banner. Okay. Th the width, I'll make sure it's 150 exactly. Sorry, 1500 pixels width. The X is perfectly set up at zero. The height, I want to give it an easy number because remember, this will become a website in HTML. So you want to make sure you transfer these numbers in your container tags, you know, for your div tags and stuff. So the height for this one will be 300 pixels and Y will be 200 pixels. So it's perfectly set up like that. A lot of these numbers add up nicely. Okay. Here, Mill, right? Yes. Um, so I am making my rectangle outside of the box. And when I drag outside, I don't see the color as you're showing. Outside meaning like outside? The outside page? of, yeah, the outside page. Can you move it inside? Is this a rectangle like you're using the, the tool like what I'm using the rectangle tool? Yeah, I am. OK, and then when I move it outside, it it's it's moving in the inside and not outside of the 
columns? Um, I don't, I don't really understand it. Do you want to show it to me quickly? You want to I show am on, screen? I'm on yep. a different, I'm, I'm on my Mac. Oh, so you mean the color is not showing as in the color for the fill of the object or what color are we talking about? Yeah, I'm going to share right now. Okay. Yeah, that'll be better. Sometimes this gets real technical and it's hard for me to understand exactly uh, how it's described. This is Eric, right? Yeah, it's okay. Much. Okay, good. So Ooh. when I dragged it outside, <laughs> it's go it's not going outside of the margin. Oh, cause, cause Eric, you have an artboard. Oh yeah. That's why. So Eric, I, I was, just, was able to see that even though it's hard for me to uh, visualize your screen cause it's zoomed out a bit, but you still did, you did a good job doing what you did. So thank you for that. Uh, so here's what Eric, Eric has a, this is why I was very careful in the beginning. Uh, Eric has an artboard. So if Eric has an artboard, it does get, it does get kind of cut off and stuff. Like see, it doesn't show the outside. Edges. Even mine gets cut off in that regard there. But um, what you want to make sure here is, Eric, if you go to um, your whole layers here, let me create, let me create artboards from uh, layers. Let me see. So I just made an artboard here. So I have an artboard like Eric now. Um, I just don't think, is this what's happening, Eric? Like when you do this, it's hiding on you. It is. Cause the artboard, right? Yeah. Right. So if, if, if you don't have the artboard, I think it'll still do the same thing to be honest with you, but let's just try it anyways. It might help you. If you, if you do this, uh, with your artboard, Eric on the right, just collapse the artboard. Like I'm doing it like this and then right click. And then um, ungroup artboards. If you do that, then you're going to have a whole mess. <laughs> Hold on a second here. Why did it do that? Ungroup artboards. Oh, maybe my, my layer is zero. My layer is zero. Let me delete my layer. I don't need layer zero. I just deleted that layer. That layer expanded wider. Probably me explaining different things that happens. Uh, so I just deleted that one. So maybe delete the background layer because that might cause a problem. Everything else should be fine. If you go right over here, if you um, or right click, okay, ungroup artboards. Still doing the the width. I'm just doing the width still. The weirdest thing. Should keep it to the width. Maybe there's some setting that I'm not really catching here. What is that? Is the background? Let's go to image size. So the image size happens to be 3548. That's because of my original selection when I created. Remember, I selected a template and I modified it. That's why. So I'm going to change the width to 1500 pixels. Okay. And the height, I'm just going to make it uh, let me see what the height is here. Yeah, the artboards can get a little little confusing when you're when you're converting them back and forth. That's why I suggest you kind of stick with one or the other here. Oh, these are all artboards now. There's the artboard. So 1200 by 1502. Canvas size is 3548. I'm going to make the canvas size 1500 pixels. Now I'm going to check my image size. 
it's still 3,500. Yeah, that's kind of messing up here. Let's try image size. I'm going to change my image size too. And don't worry about this, guys. If you stick with one method, this shouldn't happen to you. I just want to see if I can reverse the process here. So 1,500. Take this off. 1,200. I'll stretch the whole thing. Yeah, something's catching here that I'm not looking at. So anyways, Eric, if you can just try what I'm doing. Hopefully, you're not going to have this width thing, but try to un unlink your artboards and see if that will help you, okay? Just basically uh, right-click, ungroup your artboards, convert it to layers. I mean, even then, honestly, I can crop it if I like. It's not really a big deal. I'll just use the crop tool and go like this and go like that, right? I can, I can solve it either way. And then you should get your colors to show up now. But stick with no artboards. It's just easier than using How artboards. How do I do that? Stick with no artboards? When you set up the document to begin with. Oh, yeah. Sure. I, I unchecked artboards. Yeah, you uncheck it, and then you have no artboards, OK? That's how you have no artboards. So go to web. You click your web format. I'll go with like this one, for example, and then I'll turn off the artboards and I'll configure my width and height, which in this case, I think I believe I made it 1500 by 1200 pixels. So if you do that from the get go, you should get a document that looks like this. OK. Yeah. So don't worry about it now. This is just an exercise. Maybe for next time, just keep that in mind. OK. Yeah. All right. Now I'm going to go back this up a few steps. Thank God for the history panel. So I'm going to go to open up the history panel and go all the way to uh, back to. Um, wow, I can go back to where I started. Look at that. You guys know about the history panel, right? I showed you that one. It doesn't require the Del DeLorean to go back in time. You can just go back there and uh, change your stuff. I think I was at this point. I want a DeLorean. You, <laughs> I was waiting for someone to say something. <laughs> there we go. You, you, you got it, right? Yeah. I don't know if ever, everyone else got that joke, but that's good. <laughs> <laughs> back to the future, guys. <laughs> it's the movie, you know, with um, Michael J. Fox. He goes back in time. He's the DeLorean was the car. Anyhow. <laughs> yeah, the DeLorean's nice. All right. So we do have uh, basically everything here. No artboards. It's just easier to do things. And if it, the colors don't come out when you see them, no big deal. This is just placement, temporary placements for now. All right, so where we are here, let's see. Uh, back to the Amazon comparisons. Right, we do have the banner. Now let's set up these four placements here. I'm going to put this as one. I'm not going to separate it into two. I'm just going to make one, two, three, four. Another four. And then there's like a carousel going across and another one. Like we're not going to do all this, but I'll do enough to show you the setup, the way you want to set up your website. And you can carry that any way you like. So this time I'm going to put the four uh, rectangles going this way. So again, when it selects something, just click here to deselect everything. And then when you go to the rectangle tool, you won't have that issue. So I'm going to go ahead and make, um, if I do four, it's going to be done in threes because three times uh, four is 12. So I'm going to keep it with three columns, okay? So this one's going to be exactly that. Now, notice how it's not like sticking. It's not catching the guides. That's because under view, snap to guides is disabled. You don't want to turn them all off on because then it'll snap to everything like the grid that's not there. Some objects that you can't see, it's going to become hard to control. So I would really kind of limit this to only guides in this case. So what you do is it'll stick to guides like that. So when you resize this, whoops, when you resize the object, it'll, uh, res it'll stick to the guides like that. And then this one, uh, be careful not to grab the guide, the actual guide. But you can hit, uh, remember this show transform controls. You can use that to kind of leverage your transform to snap to those guides right and then we can press enter or tab turn off the show controls i don't like it on all the time and then this will be also the stroke i'm gonna turn it off to none nothing and the 
fill, I'm going to use like a darker gray color to fill that area. So it'll be like a image placement. And then I'm going to put this all the way in the in the far left corner. A little bit quite of an a little bit of an overlap. Just a, it's a CSS thing you can do with your padding. I'm going to hold Option drag and do that. Option drag and do this. Option drag and do that. So this is how you can perfectly fit everything, all your web design schematics into this layout. That's why we're using 12 columns. You can put four, three. I'll do a three column in the next example just to show you how accommodating and flexible this method is. I'm going to move this up a bit. A little overlap, it's fine. Um, that means that we'll have to go to the um, crop tool. See, look, if you don't have the artboard, you can use the crop tool because the crop tool can expand the height as well. You don't need the crop tool unless you're using... Sorry, you don't need the artboard tool unless you're using multiple artboards. You can just do all one thing with one column. And I'm just going to stick this over here. And now I'm going to create more columns down this way for some other design purpose. So we're going to use the rectangle tool again. And this time I'm going to double click here and deselect. Let's organize this a little better. It's getting a little messy. So let's call out these three uh, rectangles here and group them. I'm going to press Command G, Control G, or you can right click. You can, um, where is it here? Because I use the shortcut so often here. No. Try the pop up menu here. New group from layers, no shortcut. Okay, well, there's a shortcut. You just have to press Command or Control G. But the pop-up menu is here. It makes a group. We can call this header. Okay. And we're going to put it right to the top of the stacking order here. So this became the actual header. And the header might have, like, the hero banner with it. Okay, we're going to... You can split up into more sections or more groups, but this is fine. All right, and this will be the body, so you can create another group for this. I'll just press Command G. I'll call this the body. The nav bar should also be kind of within the header. You can create the nav bar, so you can make this like the nav bar. Where was it? This one could be the nav bar, the navigation. You can call it nav bar, or you can make a group or a layer if you like. Whatever, how detailed you want to get, it's entirely up to you. Um, so the body here is going to go slightly lower. These images, I'll just move them that way. And here I'm going to create the, the three columns in the body. So I'm working in the body now. So it's nicely organized when you do this. Like those templates I showed you uh, from the examples, right? Um, so let's build some more stuff here. I'll do three more columns with the rectangle tool. This time I'm going to make them a little wider because I want to fit three, not four. So I'm going to go one, two, three, four. Right? And this will be also copied over here and copied over here. So now I got three columns, okay, evenly divided or inserted into a, a 12 column layout because you know, three times four is 12, uh, right? Or four times three is 12 and one across. You can even do the two. I'll do one more split here for you. And to do an even split of two and two, I'm going to do six plus six. Okay, that's exactly how we're going to divide this number here. Whoops, wrong one. Right. And then we have the footer underneath. So my website's height is 1820 now. I give it more space. And for the bottom, I'm going to drag a rectangle. Perhaps I'm going to copy another one here. This will be the footer. The guide, sometimes if you want to snap it to the edge, you should put a 
a, a graphic um, or a guide that goes to the end, or you can temporarily disable um, You can do document bounds. That's the one I was looking for. If you do document bounds, it'll snap to either the edge of the document or the guide. So this is a very kind of helpful feature if you enable it because it wasn't sticking. It was kind of going back and forth. So if I do that now, it should stick to the edge of the document, right? Same as this, it should go right to the edge of the document, right? And this will be kind of like that, a little bit of space. And this should stick right to the edge of the document as well. Turn off my show transform controls and change the color of the footer. That's your footer, so you can have a layer for that as well. Let me double click here so I have more space available. This is going to be all in the body section, so I'm going to drag these down here. Be careful so it's not all over the place. So this is like the body, the main body of the website. This is like the header of the website, and this is the footer. So the footer can go in its own layer. Why not? Sure, make a group because you're gonna have more content there and images, and we're gonna call it footer. So main three parts of a website, as you know, the header, the body, the footer, and all that. The most of the you know information and content is in the body, so you can keep it organized that way. You can create sub layers and other elements in there if you have to. Uh, the footer is the footer and the header will have the nav bar in it the navigation the buttons and menu whether it's another subfolder or a folder you can also keep it that way now i want to say this is a template and then make it whatever in the future i'm just gonna move this up a little bit here just to create a nice balance i can also create additional guides So we're going to save this as website wireframe templates. OK, and I'm going to save it on the computer as a Photoshop document. All right, so that's going to go right there. And that's how we save this. You can see how these are the building blocks for any website. And all it comes down to now is utilizing those blocks to put content, whether it's text, images, graphics, colors, all kinds of stuff that you're going to get into. All right, so that's that's uh, going to be the next part. So the next part is we're going to start inserting some content in here. So we're going to keep it nice and simple. This is where you could communicate with your clients and say, hey, this is what the website, this is the breakdown. We're going to put like images here, images here. This could be your, you know, your blog, social media. This is call to action to join the memberships. Just like I showed you, my, this is the footer. This is your promotions, your headers, carousels. You know, uh, this is going to be the navigation, the main menu for the nav bar. This is a header because that's things like people can log in and uh, maybe it could be an advertisement banner or something like that. Different parts can play different things. That's it's all in modules, basically. So these modules could become the website. And then you the way you see it is you build it in HTML. So you do make the four sections, four columns three columns two columns one column one column one column nav bar setup all that is your setup in your div tags and html and then your css will supplement the styling that goes in the website you put your javascript for some additional functionality okay in the website as well and as you know already i'm not going to give you an html class because the fleet is doing a great job at that one so this is how this relates to that basically right your breakdown of your visual becomes the html so planning is key because then you know exactly what you're building. All right, so now let's look at some of the other things we can do. Uh, let's add some colors, for example, now. So we will add some color implementation. We'll add some images and some content. Uh, we'll make this website kind of look like the way it should by utilizing the sources that I have. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and hit save here. Make sure it's saved already. And... Um, Do you guys have any questions so far? Any questions before I continue? 
and um, I know um, Eric had a question with his size and boxes. Just avoid the artboards for now. Um, later, we can utilize them to make additional pages. If it just makes things easier, just keep it simple. Um, what kind of wireframe are we doing for the project? I think it'll be assigned to you. Um, did you guys get your last collaborative assignment already given to you or no? Not yet. Not yet. So you're going to be given one. It's going to be a website. What's well, going to be, I think, the band, if it's still the same thing. I'm not going to give it out the surprises. Act surprised if they tell you. It might be the band. And then you're going to create multiple components to supplement that project, which means you might create promotional material. You might create like a little brochure or booklet in your InDesign class. You're going to create a website in Felicia's class for that particular um, idea or theme that you choose in my class you're going to create a wireframe slash prototype for the website so it'll kind of look like a real website but not really but then you're going to learn how to export those elements for a website if you know what i mean okay yeah. so it'll come to you soon okay eric yeah okay. question it should be getting honestly this week if not next week you should get that assignments it's the next collaborate assignment like you did with the three ads um, you know, def, um, the the composite assignment, right? So you're going to get another one of those. For this semester, we do two. Um, did you get a, did you, did you present that one or no? Did you get a chance to present the first composite assignment or not yet? Yeah, um, we did I, like. We didn't. How? Go ahead, Eric. Sorry. <laughs> Go ahead, Eric. I cut you off. That's okay, Danielle. Um, yeah, we did in Roberto's. You presented all of you presented. Yes, very, very quickly. Yeah, like how quickly? Two minutes. <laughs> Way to go. That's good. OK, so it did work out well then. All right. I didn't get the invite. Usually we're all there to watch these presentations because it was nice and quick. Probably that's why uh, it, it was manageable. Right. And you all got a chance to do it, right? Yeah. Perfect. How did you present it? Like you went up to the desk and you did it on his computer? No, we pretty much just like either just stood up in place. Some people didn't even stand up, but most did, I think. And then, um, yeah, you just kind of, you didn't have to, you didn't have to stand up. You didn't have to go to the front. Some people went to the front, Some, but so it was a little, it was a mishmash. So how did you, how did you view each everyone's projects? How did you guys view it? You oh, he had it. He had it on a projector screen, but we also printed them, and then we were like they were going around. We were passing them around, or we oh, printed cool. them. Sorry. Nice. Yeah. So he, he, it made it work. I'm really happy to hear that. Very good. Yeah. Thanks for sharing that. Good. Yeah, it was a All good right. day. Yeah, excellent. It's nice to uh, at the end of the day to appreciate what everyone's doing and to see how everyone work comes out. Right. It's this is what it's all about networking. So we're going to do the same thing with this next one, I think. Hopefully, I mean, it's hard to do it virtually. You can see how challenging it would, would be on, on my end doing it this way. But uh, in the classroom, I think it's more doable because you can all, you know, show up, do what you did with uh, Roberto there. It worked out well. So, uh, yeah, we'll see how this one will play out. Same thing, you'll present it as well. Good. All right. So that's good. I'm glad you guys did your presentation. So now let's go ahead and uh, see how we can supplement our wireframe design with all these images and all these graphics that we have to place into this template. Next week, when we do the next class, I'm going to show you how to convert these elements into HTML elements, how to export each one as a, a JPEG, maybe a PNG could be maybe an animated GIF or something, and how to slice it properly, how to do the assets properly. And that'll be something that we'll do next week. So it's like I said, it's a two part class. Uh, I do want to get some images in here and next week I'll continue. If I don't have enough time today, we'll have enough time with two classes to do this. That's why I spread it out like that. All right, so let's continue here. With this, we have these image sources that I provided to you to build this website. Uh, doesn't have to be Amazon. It could be any website. 
we could basically build this using these images. Uh, so let's go ahead and take this to the next step now. So first let's put some menu. Uh, so it looks like a real website because right now it just looks like a bunch of blocks kind of sitting there. I'm going to create a, a menu um, on across this nav bar here. So I'm going to catch the nav bar, go to my type tool, and be careful not to click inside the type tool because if you do, it'll convert that into a text box or put the type in a text box. Even if you do, it's fine. You can just, you know, you can move it inside or outside it's up to you i'm just going to type the home button here i'm going to put space 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 i'm going to put a like a little separator here like a vertical line here and then do space 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 again okay and then i'm going to do products okay space 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 vertical divider which is right across the the right side of my keyboard beside the squiggly bracket beside the letter p on that end space 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 uh, services, space, 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 vertical divider, space, space, space. Um, what else are we going to have here? Uh, products, services, um, contacts. I'm not going to put too many buttons here. Uh, frequently asked questions, right? I mean, you can put any... You can look at most websites. You can see the amount of content they have. I'm going to highlight all these and make them smaller. Use the shortcuts, Command, Shift, less than, like that. 34 points. Looks like pretty big, but for website, 34 points compared to print, it's like your, you know, 14 points type. Okay, so even like 30 might be okay if you go with that. I'm going to center this. It's getting in the way here. Right, so it's nicely centered, and this could be like my main, um, you know, nav bar or navigation for my website. Okay, I'm gonna just double click and change this orange to like a white, so it's got a little more contrast hanging out there. And it is a bold uh, font; it's an Arial, so that's pretty easily uh, ad identifiable by your HTML fonts. Um, library there because sometimes not all fonts work you have to embed the fonts or just pick a, a common font that exists arial is a very common font it's a good sans serif to use then you got times new roman for example which is a serif font now i stay away from serif fonts most web fonts are sans serif as you know a serif is more for prints that's kind of more like the trend uh, however i've seen a few but more of them most of them are sans serifs so that's the ones you want to stick with when it comes to the, the websites, okay? All right, uh, this might be an image that we want to place into. So now that we have the navigation set up, let's put in... And by the way, this is nothing you do with here. I mean, all you can do with here is uh, copy this. If I select the, you know, let's say I go select the... Um, You gotta just select the layer. You can just highlight it like that. If you copy the CSS of this, you still have to go to HTML and do your navigation, the href tags, the link tags, everything that you know coincides with you building this uh, nav bar menu. But for now, it's gonna look like this, right? And then you can go ahead and see this is not right. You have to fix all that. So this is something I would customize in HTML. I wouldn't copy from Photoshop because it's going to look like this, and that's not really going to help you. Okay, it's going to more like give you a problem if anything. Uh, the other stuff works well, like the content boxes and stuff, but um, the nav bar I would recommend you do it from scratch. Okay, so do that in HTML. List tags, whatever L U L I tags, whatever you're building to do your navigation. Uh, this is my um, the header here, this layer here. So we're going to make this a banner. Top banner. And this top banner might have an image placed inside. Now, how do you place an image inside these, these um, rectangles? So we all learned how to do clipping last week and the same rules apply with placing contents inside vector 
um, objects by selecting the the item here if i go to file place embedded okay you can do linked in this case linked might be good in case you want to change the the images with some other images that might actually work to your advantage in this case i'll show you both let's do linked for now so make sure when you do linked everything is organized efficiently and properly because the last thing you want to do you want to do is link files and then they're missing later so that's gonna just like your website you want to make sure the links correspond to your tags and they're linked properly i'm going to try this pattern i don't know how well it's going to work but let's give it a shot right so it's kind of go up there if i move all the way this up here So it's the right width, but the height seems to extend more than everything else. So to put this inside here, okay, notice how the image is on top of the, the top banner. Remember, the shortcut is option click between the two layers to basically contain that in there. And if I hide the other ones, you'll see what I'm talking about. Again, watch this. Option click will clip that inside this area right another way to do it is to um, right click and create a clipping mask so again right click it has to be exactly directly on top of the element that you're clipping it with you right click and you create a clipping mask or like i said option click this way to place it inside the container all right now this one here i'll just take out the stroke i don't know why they have strokes these uh, layers they all have strokes so whatever we'll take them out right so that's gonna be like the header going across uh, like some kind of animation or product you're selling we'll change it for later notice how it's linked it has a link icon which means if i double click i can change the color of this externally let me show you that again because i placed this as linked I mean, you can do it even without link. You can still edit contents this way by double clicking. And if I do command U or hue and saturation, I can just change the colors on this to that. Click OK, right? And once I save it, command S, it'll change it over to that one. So it's a quite easy and subtle way for you to do that. I'm going to change the opacity of this as well. But I will change it after. Right. Um, so I want to go back and undo it. So let's see simply Command Z, Command S, go back here, automatically updates the file. So that's why you want to link or unlink um, images to help you better externally edit some of these contents in there. Because whatever you do here and you save it inside that source folder, it'll update the template here as well. Right. Okay, so the next one now, this is we'll leave this nav bar alone because that's going to be all supplemented in your HTML. This is the rectangle that might have some other things happen in here. So we're going to place another image by going to place embedded. And for that one, we're going to grab this image here. This one's good because it has room to place some text and some other elements. Right. And again, option click or right click to create a clipping mask to insert that inside the banner. Right. The good thing, again, is you can move it up or down. You can control the positioning of the image to suit its right the placement. Right. So you can do things like this, like that. Be careful not to move uh, this though, because if you move this rectangle, it's gonna move, oh, it keeps doing that one. If you move this one, it's gonna move the clipping as well. So make sure you don't do that, okay? If you wanna move it together, you can. You just have to select both layers. And now you can move the whole thing. I mean, really, you shouldn't do that, but if you have to, you can, right? Make sure you select it from here though. So maybe this auto select layer might be more of a, just maybe disable it, 
okay if it makes things easier so just do that and then that'll help you do that part better let me turn off the stroke here as well um I have a lot of out outlines on these objects. This one here. Right. Okay. It's all good now. I just moved it. Right. Okay. So the next ones are these rectangles here. Uh, you know. We're going to put some text elements after the only text element that put was the was the navigation that we have here for the for the menu buttons. OK, um, we're going to put some additional ones after like call to action and some other probably headers and text elements. But for now, let's worry about the images. So this other one, I'm going to go auto select layer. So I'm going to turn this on and off repeatedly to just have an easier way to navigate my stuff because you do want to. Do it. It's easier than you hunting for the layers this way. That might be a little more problematic or trickier. So just try to be comfortable with both. Okay, this and that. So click on this file, place embedded. And for this one, I'm going to use uh, this image here. You know what? Maybe that doesn't fit the proportion well. Let's try another one. And I'm using place embedded instead of place linked. You can use either or. If we stick with one, maybe it's better. Uh, okay, so just I just want to show you the difference. So one, you can change the link externally. And I'll update your design in here, which is really, really a neat feature, just like in design, just like building a website. It's relying on that source. So make sure if you do linked, you keep it stored and uh, organized in a way that you can always find it later. I'm going to go with this one. It's a lot easier to it just matches that uh, area better. There we go. Press enter. I'm going to right click. Create a clipping mask. So then the image is inserted in there. Um, you know, you can obviously make the image go higher and, and put some text elements here like call to action like a button or something in that regard okay maybe we can do that after so maybe for that i might have to set up a nice guide so all of the images will follow suit so we know exactly how we're doing it on all of them so we'll do the same thing over here place links i'll just keep doing links from now All right, and again, um, option click or clip the image that way. Uh, this one, we could put the text underneath. If you want to clip the image that way, I guess we'll have to do it this way. We can do another clipping, I guess. Maybe you can put a box in a box and then clip it that way if you like. Okay. All right, let's fill out a few more here, and then I'll do some of the other stuff after. So quickly uh, place um, linked. Click on the box first, so it'll kind of situate it better for you, right? Um, I'll have to use the same image because I'm running out of images here. You guys get the idea though, right? It's just, you got to collect your sources. Make sure you have enough content to work with when you do this. So uh, this one actually, what I'm going to do, because this one's linked, this one I'll make it not linked so then you'll see the difference of uh, so i'm going to go place embedded this time place embedded as opposed to place to linked right 
enter, option click. So we clip it in there, and then we purposely move it up to that position there. And you can go left and right just to kind of match the exact position of the previous one if you have to do that. Now, the thing is, if you do this and you change the color. Right. Because I don't have it linked. It only changed this one, so I was still able to edit it in a way to, uh, you know, on a separate level because it wasn't linked. It didn't affect that one. If it was linked, once I change the linked file, it should affect all the other ones. So that's the main difference or the takeaway from this. If you want to do it back and forth, uh, better yet, you're going to have different images. You don't have to worry about editing one or the other. OK, it's all a matter of gathering proper information. Uh, let me place another one here. I'll do another embedded this time. Let's get this uh, lighthouse. What's this one here? Long no, that one's not good. Place embedded. And there's the lighthouse. All right. And we're gonna move this one up here. Press enter. Option drag. We're gonna move it all the way across that way. All right. Let's fill these images as well. So again, click directly on this one. Uh, we can do linked or embedded. As long as you stick to one or the other, OK, don't change it too often. So let's do that one. A lot of shoes on these uh, files here. Enter. Uh, right click. Create clipping mask or just option click. Same as this one here. We're going to do. Uh, what are we doing a better a link now? I'm doing them all linked. Some more landscape images. It's okay if you go bigger because then you can easily just fit it within the box there like that, right? I'm going to show you another method of doing this as Photoshop does have another tool they introduced that like two, three years ago. With placing it's like InDesign. It's like putting picture boxes and putting pictures in it. But I wanted to focus on one method separately than the other, so I don't mix up the two. So this works. This has always worked. So I'm sticking with the with the original method. Okay. And then I'll show you the more newer method. If you like that one, you can use either one, whatever is better for you. Some people have a preference. Let's go to the other one here. I'm gonna grab another image from this one. There we go. And option click. Oh, this one's taking over the whole thing. Sure, might as well. Just make sure it matches the dimensions. And whatever, you can put more images here, text, uh, footers, different things. You get the idea, right? This is how you can build a whole entire design of the website. Let's put some more call to action there, maybe some headers just to fulfill it. And then I'll show you how to save it. And then for next week, I'm going to continue the same design and show you how to export these things for your HTML because that's just as important. So this is this is this is the design fundamental building part and the next week lesson will be the the execution part okay so let's go and uh, utilize these boxes here now maybe i'm going to use a black background it's just easier to put uh, the text in there I'll just use dark gray doesn't really matter there's black for now And you can make this decision beforehand, so you don't have to do change things back and forth. But if you do, you can always do that, right? And then a, a good way is to kind of like keep your 
uh, layers nice and organized like I did here because it does get a little overwhelming. So in this case, you might want to be careful here when you put the text elements. Um, and you can see what other websites put like Amazon when you do have a call to action buttons taught, you know, um, today's deals, explore deals. I decided to put my stuff down here instead of up here. You know, so let's let's put the shop early holiday gifts like you can make up your own headings if you like. OK. So copy. I'm just going to just to speed up the process a bit here. I'm going to go ahead and uh, click in here. Be careful because it might be a separate layer. That's OK. In this case, you can always uh, move it afterwards. So I'm just going to make this a little smaller here. I'm pressing Command Shift less than. So I'm just utilizing some of the type methods here. See the see the smart guide. That centers it for me right there. So I know it's in the center. So you can use some of these Photoshop features to do it. Now, when you do this in HTML, it's going to center it for you automatically because. I think the default preset center might be there, so you can do that later. But for now, just for aesthetic purposes, you might want to just keep it nicely tucked away like that. OK, so this will be on a separate layer. And after I'm going to dump this in there and maybe create a separate sub layer. OK, or perhaps I can call out, make a folder and, and, and call this, um, you know. all to actions right and that could be kind of put nicely in there so i can just have it kind of not too crammed up i can have it separately now because i like how this came out i guess i'm gonna option drag this all the way here so it's like a duplicate and just call this something else so maybe i'll do another special like today's deals right copy and paste just to speed up the process here I messed up my application here for a second. Yeah, I think I have something messed up here, guys. My tools and options disappeared. I think I did like some kind of a uh, that can happen if you press F F tab sometimes i probably clicked on a shortcut all right so today's deals i'm going to copy this one over here as well nicely centered again you can you can do different ways of centering i'll show you a cool little trick to center another one in case you forgot explore deals let's just do that one we have the other holidays coming up soon so it's funny how the next day i went to the like the store and Everything being Halloween and pumpkins and orange and black and stuff. Now it's the very way they switch to the next day to Christmas coming up. So it's all these every holiday is um, it's moving fast. Time's going fast. And then the next one I'm gonna pick. Uh, I already have today's deals. Uh, save and refer best sellers in home. There we go. There's a nice header to use. I'm gonna, and there's a picture of a lighthouse. How better way to describe that caption? All right. I don't like how this went to the line underneath, so be careful. I'm just gonna go click here, back and delete. Because when it when you paste stuff, it does that sometimes. So make sure it's a one liner, not a multiple lines. Okay. So how do you center these perfectly? Let's just say this this guide is not or see this center guide. It's not working for you. Let's say it's it's not showing up or whatever. It's not working for you exactly. There it is, right? So the way you center this otherwise, because before we didn't have the smart guides, is you can literally 
do this. You can make a selection, very old school trick here. You can make a selection, right? Go to the move tool, make sure this layer is selected. Okay. And then watch this, the alignment options show up. So you can go left, center, right. So based on the selection, you're constraining your alignments and those parameters. So if the layer is selected, a selection is established, you're always in control. Okay. Just a quick little tip. All right, so that's how you can put your little captions and headings and whatever you see here, you can rebuild in Photoshop. Okay, let's put a like a header over here just to pronounce this a little better. So maybe look your best this season, right? This could be something that we can put here. And then um, for that, we need another text box. And this will be in the call to action folder. It just gets a little too crammed up in those other folders because of a lot of stuff happening in there. So it's good to keep it separately. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, you can always, you know, uh, put this at the very top of the order list. So it covers all the layers underneath it, if that makes sense. All right. So this one, I'll draw a text box. I never did that yet. So I'm going to show you just in case you forgot, like the book cover, draw a text box like that. And then you uh, type your call to action. Well, look your very best this season. Now, this is all lowercase. Why am I typing uppercase? That's because I think I have the, the uh, caps on, but I didn't have it on. So you can go to type. Um, let me show you the character palette here. If you press Command T while you're in the type mode, because Command T does transform, this is on right here. This, see, this force cap is on, all caps. So if that happens to you, you can turn it off and then have normal text appear like that, okay? So that's how you can control that part, okay? So make sure you're totally aware of that. And then you can control the, the font, the size, uh, the color, right? I'm going to make this bold. Make this bigger. Command shift. Here's your point size here. 33. You can go to 48 if you want, right? Because it's a text box, it'll keep it within that boundary, right? So if I make the text box smaller or bigger, see, it conforms to that size, right? So you can actually do that and do your uh, banners that way. Maybe this will be a good left align fit instead. Right, and then I have another call to action under here so they can click somewhere and go to that particular link for that page, right? So this will be a shop fall season. So that could be like a hyperlink and I'm, I can keep it together, but I can also keep it as a separate layer underneath. Maybe it's better to keep it separate. And then um, shop holiday season. This will be smaller. I'm going to take off the bold, just keep it regular or bold italic if I want to make it, right? Just regular is fine. Nice and small. And look at this. You can underline it this way. There's an underline option, so you don't have to worry about all these little um, styles you can put on there. I want to have this nice and visible, so I'm going to move it down here. To have it all left aligned nicely, that's fine. We'll keep it down here, right? You can select both of these together and just align them to the left if you want to do that. And then maybe move this a little down, move this a little up. So you can have like a hyperlink to go to that specific page or whatever link you want to create. Um, the footer, of course, will have other parts in there. This might have another element. Um, just gonna finish this one here with. Uh, right, so here I'll have um, another call to action. I'm gonna bring in. Maybe sign in for your best best experience. So we'll, it's like a sign up for the web page. Now watch how I'm gonna convert this into a text box. I'm just gonna go click inside, and then right away. 
conforms that text into that box. I'm going to hit paste, command A, make this nice and large. I'm going to resize this anyway, so I'm just going to press command T, turn off the underline. Um, I can center this, of course, and I can resize my uh, text box to that. Make this white so it's easier and noticeable. Make it a little smaller. Just make the box smaller as well. Go to the move tool and then move this over here so people can click on it and they can go to that particular section. And this one here also can be another call to action, or I'll have a partial image with call to action, right? Maybe this will be Discover Premium Brands. We'll be over here. I'm just going to copy this over. Notice how it hid behind that. Uh, I should have made this call to action, honestly. So let's move this all the way up into the call to action folder just to make things easier. So then if I do this, I'll have no problems moving stuff back and forth. It's always a good strategy to keep a call to actions folder separately because I found keeping things too consistent sometimes it doesn't work either. Okay. Uh, so let's put this all in the call to action folder. So all the text elements are nicely grouped. All right. And this will be, uh, what do we say this is going to be? Discover premium brands. That's right. But for this one, we can do like a left align. You can even do a right align if you want. I've seen some other alignment options being used. Um, the three lines of text. And then we can maybe put an image in there. A bit smaller. Right. And then we'll maybe insert an image in this box, partially showing some product or something. So for that, I'm going to go place uh, embedded. And we're going to get this product over here. That out, move it in. Right there, okay, so we're going to press enter. And we're going to click on this box over here. Oh, I think I misplaced the image. Oh, there it is, actually. Perfect. Option click. And there is it nicely. It's tucked away inside my container with that. And maybe the color might have to match more of this color here. Maybe this color. Maybe we want to bring this nice pink purple color from the shoe. I can always do a match. When I bring the image in, you can just double click here and pick a color. And of course, the eyedropper will conform to your you know, selection here, right? So I just picked on this uh, color here, clicked OK, and I took care of that part as well. So content is important. The website will look more complete when you do these little details. So I do always encourage you to do everything you can to make it look like a realistic website. Like if somebody was to look at this, somebody that you know and say, hey, what does this look like? This should not even take two seconds to answer your question and say it looks like a website. And that's how you know. Right now, the header, the footer is important. You can have like a hyperlink, sublinks, and all that kind of stuff. So just to wrap this up a little quicker, because I'm running out of time here, I'm going to just, just to screen capture this, I'm not going to retype all this. It'll take me too long. So I'm going to do a command shift four. Close your eyes for a second, okay? <laughs> That's what I'm going to do. Uh, command shift four. I'm going to hit uh, just a nice screen capture here with control, okay? If you're not looking, right? Just pretend you're not looking for a second. And I'm going to do this part. Paste. Kind of win the middle. Okay, you, you can open your eyes now.
Alrighty, so this could be the footer, and maybe I'll stretch the height more of the website to match those, uh, to match the height. So 1900 pixels. So our website's pretty much, you know, um, 1500 by 1900 pixels. All right, and this will be the footer. Maybe I'll match the entire background to match my footer dimensions. For that, I'm just going to basically do the transform, bring this all the way down here, and just double click and match the same color. And again, I would have taken the time to type all that stuff, but you get it. Uh, the footer is basically has all the disclaimers, copyright, a lot of the hyperlinks to go to, you know, like a site map, basically, which takes you to any part of the uh, web page uh, has like, you know, backlinks, all kinds of stuff that will help the website do some additional navigation, right? Just this color right here might change it to that one. And make this a little smaller. Right. Right, we we'll hit save now. I think this is all ready for next week to go to the next segment. So as you, you can see here with this video, we did um, the entire website from beginning to almost finished, depending on what the client wants. Then you present them this. This might take you a couple of hours, right? It's still building better than building a website. It'll take you probably a lot longer than that. And then they can swap out, you know, elements of design, images, text, colors, fonts. You can discuss that at this stage. So then when you publish the website and make it into a real website, there'll be no questions. There'll be no concerns. Everything will be as is. And they sign a waiver, right? You, you sign on the job. You sign off on it. That's what we do when we print jobs. You sign the signature or the docu DocuSign form. Then if they complain, you're like, hey, listen, uh, you did agree to this. This is what you wanted. This is what you got. So there's no uh, miscommunication, right? Very important. This is when the business, the business part is gets a little more complicated as you make a living doing this kind of thing because uh you know he say she say different things can happen with agreements and stuff so this is why design is important so if they agree to this and you make the website they can't say after you want to change stuff this is what they liked and it's never going to look a hundred percent what you see here is never going to look exactly but it'll look pretty pretty similar to what it should look like Okay, I'm going to save this now again. And next week, like I said, we're going to convert this into an actual website. I'll even show you my ultimate old school trick original to make it look like a website on a browser in HTML using very minimal code. But you're not allowed to use that, of course, because it's 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 not responsive, A. B, it's, you know, the technique is like more than 15 years old. It'll fool most people. <laughs> Because you can actually upload it on a server and it look like a website. But the people that know better and they said they have a mobile device and look at your website, it'll actually be like Amazon. It's not gonna do it's not gonna do this. Okay. So if you want to compare it to Amazon, it's gonna look like this, but nothing will move like the way I'm moving it right now. So we'll make it browser compliant for presentation only. Just so you can serve it up on your server and Maybe you have a client that's in a different continent, right? Maybe they're in Europe somewhere or Asia. And you can say, hey, look, this is um, the website. Do you like it? They can see it actually on the browser. I think you can even make it interactive too and stuff. So it's pretty cool what you can do these days uh, before you make the website. This is just a prototype, okay? Okay, so I think that's it for today. Well, it's been a, a good uh, a lengthy lesson, but it covered a lot of important stuff. Hope you enjoyed it. I'm gonna go back there and uh, wish you all a great week. Stop the recording and let's talk about. Um, well, I won't talk about it yet because you haven't been assigned uh, the the composite assignment yet, but that's gonna be on the to do list. So basically, let's wait for that, 
and then I'll give you the next assignment as well. Uh, I think right now you still have what's pending right now. Let me just double check. Let me stop the recording first and stay stay tuned. I'm going to see what's happening in case there is something due. I believe we're all good for now. Just have to maybe work on practice these techniques and I'll see you all in the next video. All right. Bye for now and have yourself a great week. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. OK, I'm going to stop the recording and we'll look at the thing there.